whichever way you look at this formation on this chart of the German backs, you can view this either as a triple top, where three, subs, three subsequent highs have been made, and two subsequent highs after the first high, if you like. And the lower pivot I've marked P1, the third high I've marked P2, and then I've marked at this highest high at P0, and I've joined those pivot lines with a, uh, an Andrew, the Alan Andrew pitchfork. Very straightforward to do. And you can see that I've entered the trade short here. Uh, and I've moved my stop loss up to um, a profit position but because we're just now approaching the possibility of having tested the median line once, twice, and now being tested for a third time. And the aim here is that we would, would like to see a zoom through. And the viable target for this trade is 93.16. Precisely. And that is calculated very simply as P0 um, to P1, but starting from P2, if that makes sense. So we're trying to achieve the same distance of P0, B1, but starting from that P2 pivot. And that takes us neatly to the sort of 9316.6 area. And I've put my take profit just uh, above that kind of on this 25% um, of the um, distance between the median line and the lower uh, median line. Uh, stop loss, of course, was just above uh, this high initially, the swing high. And we can also treat this as a swing breakout as well. So we've just broken out below this swing low. So I have brought my stop up nice and tightly because it's the end of the day. It's 5 p.m. Uh, UK time, 6 p.m. European time, so expecting the behaviour of, uh, of the liquidity on the black balls to thin up. Um, now it's a uh, kind of close of business, but we might see some uh, posi position size adjustments by the institutions in this sort of last half hour, uh, which allow that zooming through uh, that we are seeking here to occur. So I'm just going to zoom in. So zooming into the chart, we can see more clearly um, what's been going on. We've had the uh, median line holding twice on this 15 minute chart and a bounce that's, we could look at these um, uh, these levels, these 25% levels within the uh, Andrews pitchfork as sort of uh, support and resistance between which the price has been moving. So it's come down from that pivot it's come to the 25% there, it's got up to the 75% and it's come down there to the, or if we take count from the uh, from the top, we can call that the 25%, the 50%, 75% and then 100% of the, of the whole median line. So you can see that the price has kind of been moving between quite nicely, which suggests that this is going to be a valid, um, likely to be a valid pitchfork and it has indeed tested that medium line. So that medium line can now be trusted. I kind of brought the stop up just above that um, support, which will now should uh, act as resistance um, now if the price does uh, go back up. So we're just waiting now for to see whether the, uh, the market zooms through and um, seeking to achieve uh, this, this target around about uh, 93, uh, 30 or so. Um, if you look at it exactly, so around about 93.340 or so. So just giving a little bit of uh, leeway there. Um, the, uh, the actual target is 93.16, but just in case there's a bit of an underthrow, we're already trying to get below this P1, um, but we're going to assume that there's going to be some profit taking just below there. So um, if it gets there, um, then we'll be back soon. Um, or if it starts moving towards there, we'll be back soon. It's medium line now 
support to act as a pivot. So we might we might see the price kind of going up and down uh, along the line. We might see a, a, a short bounce and then a, and then a deep bounce back up. It stops us out. We don't know yet. And um, you know there's there's nothing guaranteed in these markets. There's plenty of patterns here that seem to be um, kind of playing out, which we can we can identify. Um, but firstly, we've got um, a very clear kind of downtrend within within this uh, within this media this uh, uh, pitchfork structure um, that we can we can sort of show uh, by those lines this this sort of steep line coming down here. Um, we could also um, look at it as a kind of a wedge um, formation if we join those lines there. So there's kind of like a, uh, a sort of a wedge uh, formation going on there as well. Um, we could also sort of spot the um, kind of head and shoulders um, kind of arrangement that's going on here. So it's a slightly odd um, sort of lower shoulder there, and um, so it's quite difficult to to kind of draw. Um, in, in a way, it's kind of <laughs> almost like that. So we, ju we just, as well as sort of testing the, uh, as well as kind of testing the uh, the uh, uh, median line, it's also uh, probably making it even tougher. Is this kind of head and shoulders uh, pattern? But, but you can kind of see a head and shoulders there. You can maybe draw it slightly differently. Maybe kind of draw it like you know, maybe like that. Um, yeah, could probably draw it like that. And there was the break and then a retest. Um, that's kind of a, a slightly unorthodox form of, of head and shoulders, you could kind of say. Um, going on there. So there's shoulder, head, shoulder, break. There's actually a retest of this 50% um, within the uh, median to upper median line, and then uh, a kind of break um, uh, lower uh, to the median line, which has then bounced, and then it's kind of come off that shoulder line again. Uh, on its way down. Uh, we've just got a little bit of a pierce through the median line now as well, which is, is good news for the trade, uh, in that it's now overcome, um, at least for, for a moment, and it's, it's pierced uh, that median line through. But that's a, a, it's an ambiguous show until we get a few closes below there, uh, and some kind of retests and some selling and the retests of the, uh, of, of the median line. But it's good to see that the median line there has been pierced. Um, so, head and shoulders formation, just, just to highlight that. Kind of the head and shoulders in here, like that. There's the head. Kind of overthrown a bit, like I say, but that would just make it too far a reach to actually ever get in the trade. So, you know, that's kind of we've said that's the head and shoulder line there. It's kind of reached to this area here. Um, took out some stops if you put the stop too tightly, taken out there. But the stop above the you know, trailing above the uh, yellow line there would work. Um, and if we Join these points up. Actually, um, this I'm not really quite so happy with this trend line because it only it's only um, been touched twice. But if we extend it down, it, it also could could act as, as a resistance. Um, so we could we could also pause if we, if we were wanting to give this trade a bit more room, put the stop at kind of a break even. That would be above that trend line, uh, aiming for it to hold. It has only been tested twice though, I like to see things, it was tested three times actually. I like to see things tested like three or four times quite clearly, and at least the 15 minute chart to um, sort of communicate validation. Okay, what else can we uh, say about this? Let's just get rid of the head and shoulders pattern. And head and shoulders trend line, shoulder line. Um, I'm going to keep this wedge um, in position for the time being. Okay, so also we should probably note lower high, lower low. Okay, so lower high and lower low here. We could say as well. So here you've got higher, higher high, higher low. 
So that's all in that trend. If we make a trend line from like that, you can see also how that has acted as a support and resistance. So support here, support here, a little bit of support here, then when it's broken, it becomes resistance here and here. So we could say that the break of this trend line, the clear break of this trend line around here, that's the first indication that this uptrend is now uh, no longer uh, valid. Um, so in that case, what you're going to get there, you're going to get some sellers here, okay? And some, and those sellers are going to have their stops potentially, some of them, are going to have their stops above this swing high right here. Okay, so there are going to be some stops up here at that 10100 level, definitely. And that's also just above you know, the pitchfork trigger line as well. So this is definitely an area um, where there's going to be some stops. If it gets above there, there's going to be some stops taken out there. Now, if people got in at this level here, that implies that, let's say they entered on the close of this candle right here, or on a break below the close of that candle. And there is their stop loss. What we can then do is draw in some Fibonacci studies. Okay, so what I've done there is I've drawn a Fibonacci study which starts at zero and goes to 100. Forget about the rest of the lines for now, just the zero and the 100. So 100% 100 of the move from this high, effectively, you just get it, try and get it a bit more of that. So from this high approximately to this close would be the distance between the bears who got in at this level here and their stop loss. So how many points is that? We can take a look. So that's around about a 250 point, or well, precisely 250 point stop loss. So some of those bears will have taken profit around about here at this 200% level, which is a one-to-one -one risk reward. And you can see how this candle kind of spiked below the 200 and then it's bounced back up. Maybe that was a sign of some of the profit taken here. We're also contending with this 250, which is one and a half times risk reward. But you will also have some traders who are going for a one to two risk reward. Some, some traders who are trading this trend breakout are going for one to two. Now, that 1 to 2 risk reward where it says 300 there because if this is 100% and this is where you enter the trade if effectively if we make that 0 where we enter the trade so if the entry there is 0 then a 100 a 1 to 1 risk reward is here and a 1 to 2 risk reward is pretty much exactly where you place that take profit so I'm actually just going to adjust that slightly just so it's just on or above that one to two risk reward, because the, you would expect that the traders who got in here with their 250 pip stop loss are going to be taking some profit at least at 500 pips. Okay, um, this is um, a particularly volatile stock index has been, um, especially during this coronavirus uh, episode. Um, so this is a very reasonable stop um, take profit to have. Even if, like me, you got into this trade rather late um, during this pullback here. Okay, so um, it's reasonable to infer that some traders will have their take profit here at this um, one to two risk reward. Now, that doesn't mean to say you can't take risk off earlier, so you can take some risk off at this 61% um, extension below. 161 or um, 188.6, the uh, kind of uh, uh, classic uh, relation. If we use these more for when we're doing Elliott wave. So um, again, we've got um, another piercing of the um, of the uh, of the line, the uh, median line. And if we look a little more closely, we can see also that on this 15-minute chart, the um, 
the low of the previous candle has just just about been broken. So that should find sellers. There sh it should find some sellers below that low. Um, if we're in sell mode, then you would expect the bears to be selling. Uh, and we're in strong sell mode, then you'd expect bears to be selling uh, at the close of candles, at the 50% of candles, potentially at the high of candles, and below the low of candles. So kind of a, a mini twin breakout. And at the moment, we're just kind of hugging it. Um, that median line low, and um, two pierces now of the median line without a, uh, a significant bounce. And now our stop loss actually um, that's being brought up now acts as what one might call a three bar stop. Okay, so we've got three consecutively lower uh, candles here, um, which in itself is a mini trend. Um, and uh, a, a, a break of that trend would be indicated by a break above the high of this. Uh, third candle in. So that's a, a tight stop and, and, and also a three bar or a three candle stop that's in place at the moment. If um, you're being even more aggressive about the stop, you could trail it just two candles behind, but I'm more than content to just trail it and um, leave it here at the time being and see what happens with this, this breach of the, uh, of the median line. And the next kind of support level um, to break is, is of course, this, this wedge that's been set up here with one, two, three touches, and then a failure, um, where the uh, median line acted as, as, a, um, as strong support. Um, so, you know, assuming that the momentum just simply continues, um, we want to see a, a test of this line first, and then a hitting of the a take profit. And uh, notice as uh, time goes on, um, this take profit gets actually closer and closer to the median line itself, um, and, for, and higher and higher above this 25% level, which is good because it means the price doesn't have to go as far towards this 25% extension beyond um, the uh, median line. Okay, I think um, without kind of analysing it to death, that's that's a lot of what we can say. Uh, about this chart in terms of uh, some of the patterns that we have just spotted. Um, we're inside a wedge, uh, we've, we've had kind of A, B, C, D, we could say, and then perhaps, well perhaps if we try and break it into five ways, we've got A, B, C, D, which is kind of an ABC, and then this is wave E, so this would be the final wave of, of that wedge. So I'll just label those for you, um, just using one of the uh, Elliott wave, uh, wave tools I, I have, a simple one. So this is called the Elliott wave easy counter script, which I found on a, uh, a, a MetaTrader 4 forum, and it simply allows you to uh, to use uh, to change the code very simply so that you can label the waves in the way that you want to label them. I'm just waiting for that to open now. So I want to try to label these waves using letters. And we're going to use orange colour and Kahoma font. So hopefully this will work. Sometimes it misbehaves this script. So I'll bring it on. Okay, for some reason it wants to start with the letter C instead of A. So I'm not sure why that is. It may be because one of the other scripts on this chart is inferior. So if we call that of swing A, or that pivot A, and we're saying that one's B, and if we say this is C, and then if we say this one is D, that suggests we're now in the fifth subwave of this wedge. Which reasonably ought to finish around about here. 
to extend. What we want it to do, ideally though, is to overthrow and then down here somewhere, earlier than this, so I think. Um, so we can also sort of attempt to label the subwaves of this ABCD wedge as well. And I'll do that in a different font and a different colour and size. Okay. So this time we've got, so within each of these, I believe, and I'm a student of Elliott Wave, I'm constantly learning, it's not a subject that you can master even in a lifetime something. But I believe that these wedges, when you take an ABCDE pattern under Elliott Wave theory, ought to all contain three subwaves, like ABC within the uh, each of those waves. So it's a so-called three, 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 three pattern. ABC is the first three. So I've got the wrong number of waves to be counting here. Just need to alter the script slightly. Okay, um, and I'm back. So we've got here A, B, and C. So we call this C wave of B, basically. It's the small C within that big wave B. So this is so-called fractal analysis. So there's a fractal theory behind this, that, that, that smaller patterns occur within bigger patterns, effectively. So if we went down another time frame smaller, we would see that this wave from big A to the small A, that also contains a small ABC within itself, and it would go smaller and smaller, or bigger and bigger. Um, as we can see on this chart. So we've got here A, B, and then this will be uh, an A, B, C subway. So we call that A, and this is the B. And there's the B. It kind of disappeared and reappeared there. And then that is C wave of, uh, of C. And then we have a, that's there. And then we have B. And then we have C wave of C, C wave of D rather, there. And then what we might say here is that we have A, and we have B, And that we're now in C wave, the C wave, okay, um, of this kind of, you could call it a descending converging triangle, you could call it a wedge, it doesn't really make much difference. And now let's just see, just while we're at this point in time, let's just, this is quite interesting. So we would want to see here whether the uh, median line now, now acts as a resistance. So we've, we finally have a candle that bre not only breaches the medium line, but also closes below it on the 15 minute chart. So let's see now how well it does as a resistance point as the price now approaches that medium line. So now we are looking um, at being in, potentially, at C wave of E. So the final sub wave of uh, wave E and C, which I'm saying that it may overflow to our profit target here, and C. At least that's what we are hoping to achieve. And um, 
Again, if you're being really aggressive about your stuff and confident with medium line, you might even bring the stop loss to even closer and start trading at kind of two bars behind, but I'm just going to leave it where it is just for now. Um, so what can we expect for this C wave? Well, we can expect for this C wave that it would potentially have its own ABC sub wave at one level um, smaller than this A, B, and C. So we would expect that right here is a carrying kind of its own little ABC. Um, in other words, C wave here contains its own smaller fractal level uh, a, B, C. So if this is B, then are we, have we had A? And is this B forming now? And how, how much is B going to extend? And then C. And this is where we could kind of take the forecast into the nth degree and we could start using Fibonacci and so on. But we're not going to do that right now. We're going to keep the charts already looking less than clean. Um, but I just wanted to illustrate to you that as well as what we did with the patterns, we could also start producing a kind of a wave count um, around the expectations um, of, of the path around the pattern that's forming. It could of course underflow. This could this could be the bottom that's forming now. Um, that's um, very much possible. Um, so um, we we want to just kind of keep an eye on this and you know consider whether we want to um, you know, keep the stop here, which I, which I do. Um, and um, another interesting level, just one more level while we're thinking about levels, is going to be the, um, the kind of a halfway point between, um, or, or the apex, if you like, of, of the triangle or, or the wedge. And that could also be quite an interesting line to look at. So if we take a direct, if we look straight up from here, right, up to here, you get that perfectly straight. You can see that's 310 points. Okay, so at 105 points is going to be the middle. So right here, 105 points, which is kind of like in line with that B. I'm trying to just see if there's a, a waypoint there. So around about 9757, 9757, we have got the midpoint, if I calculated correctly, 9757, we've got the midpoint of that wedge here. Now if we do the same thing, say from so that A is there, and we go from there to there, so that's 225, 224 points, let's call it, so what's that, 112 is the midpoint, so what, if we go down to 112 points, see how it says 1 slash and then 118, that's the number of points, so there's 112, so that's 9611.5. 9611.5. So I'm going to put in line with this A 9611.5. If we put there 9611. Okay, so the recording went on pause. I'm not sure exactly when, but we were um, just. Uh, we were just looking into um, finding out the midpoint of this wedge. So to do that, just to recap, I just I just looked at using this crosshair. I just stopped off at this point here and just said, well, what's the halfway point? If that's 310 pips, then where's 105? And then I marked that level. And uh, similarly, I did the same process, same procedure right there. So we now need to join those two points effectively. So that's about, round about, 
the midline or the apex of the triangle, just about there. So it's a bit of a, a rough version. I'm going to put that in a bright red colour to sort of show it. Actually, I'm going to make it a thick line just to show it as uh, a key pivot. You know, so the price has also been pivoting around this this midline of that apex, and quite usefully for us, our stop loss is is quite neatly tucked above, quite nicely tucked above that midline. So we're kind of hoping that that midline, if we do get a break above the um, median line again, and note that that has tested successfully on the 15 minute chart and you can see that there are sellers exactly on the median line um, you know, making some money actually on the way down um, you know, high frequency trades um, scalpers um, you know, selling off with a very tight stop loss at that um, median line and uh, so now we, we've introduced a, another sort of um, line of support and resistance. It's not actually that been done perfectly accurately. Uh, I think the replacement of this, I think the placement of this, let's, let's just improve it slightly. So using this kind of B as an anchor, you go up to the top and see that's, okay, so that's 320 pips. So where's 110? Okay, so you see that 110 Is it 9780? So I'm going to move this arrow, this arrow to where that B is. I want it at 900. Uh, nine, what was it? 980? No, it couldn't be 980. Let's just check again. So where are we? End of the day here. So we've got 320 over 110. Which is half of that. No, it's not 160. 155. My mental maths is not working. 155. I thought it seemed a bit low. So that's at 98227 roughly. So if we change that to 9827 roughly, okay that. And then if I just redraw this from here. And make sure it is going past that. That's now a bit more accurate as the precise, uh, a bit more precise as the uh, intersecting line directly through the uh, line of symmetry through the wedge. Um, and you can see how that itself is held. You know, a couple of times here, you know, there. It's acted as a as a pivot within within the wedge. Um, so that's another useful line to be aware of. Actually, the level we're at right now is where the um, that line sort of intersects the median line as well, interestingly. And we've just come below and sellers below the low again, and we've got bounce off the median line. So we're actually approaching what could actually be the end. It could actually be the end at this level here, at 9408, and um, could be the end of the pattern. And but like I say, we are so we are aiming to that E. So we get down to here. So we're looking for a sneaky end of day kind of breakout. So some stops perhaps to be taken out a lot, busy to be taken out below that median line. And if we can, but this week we would we would expect this to be a halting line, nine four or eight. I certainly would expect uh, that to be a halting line um, for the price action. We could get a zoom through it, but it's more likely to experience at least a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of profit taking. Um, for those who are pursuing uh, this uh, wedge pattern uh, in their trading. Okay, so um, I think we'll leave it there until um, either um, the trade gets stopped out or until we reach the target or until we reach this level here. So I'm going to pause the recording uh, for now and just kind of keep an eye on the on the action. Something else you can do, of course, is to draw a smaller pitchfork within the larger pitchfork. 
And again, um, the choice of pivots really ought to be weighed up on how well it captures the ensuing action. Um, so I've just by I um, chosen this pivot point here, and this uh, C is the low, and then D is the uh, P2. So we've still got a P0, uh, a P1, and P2. Um, and um, you can see how it kind of, the median line's been tested several times, um, as well as acted as a bit of symmetry, and then we've kind of come off really strongly um, with two tests of the upper median line. And it's come all the way down and indeed pierced through, and then is now kind of guided below the median line here as well. Um, so um, this is kind of a, a pitchfork that's slightly steeper within the larger pitchfork, and again um, supports the um, to an extent supports the take profit provided we stay below um, this median line. Also, the median line itself um, kind of reaches the, um, the, the, the take profit here uh, as well. Um, so. Um, this is kind of a, an example of a medium line within a pitchfork within, or a smaller pitchfork, or a, a local pitchfork, if you like, uh, within the larger, um, the larger context. And um, so, in in this in this case, uh, our stop loss is is sort of above the fifty percent of or the, if we add if we actually sort of what we can do actually is. Um, Couple of things here so I can show the levels within. So our stop loss is kind of above the 50% um, area of this uh, of this pitchfork. So I'm just going to get rid of the levels because it does make spaghetti junction on the chart. So I'll show, show the levels switch off. Um, so let's see whether that uh, pitchfork um, median line how that how well that occurs with, with the price approaching it right now as well. Um, it is acting, it has acted as a line of symmetry, um, although previously um, the price went all the way up to the upper median line, but it's now got below um, that, um, uh, this median line again. We could also draw an internal trend line to this um, as, as follows. There's also an internal trend line there. That may not quite correspond to the 25%, but it's, it is a sort of a channel um, that seems to be operational as well at the um, more micro level. Send that as well. So you can see, you can kind of going back, seems to have acted as strong resistance here, strong resistance here, and uh, failed to act as, resist as, as resistance here. But then here and here it was tested again. So there's been quite a few tests of this, I changed the color of that, of this trend line as well. It seemed to have disappeared there, the trend line that I just drew. Oh no, it hasn't. It's, uh, it's, beg your pardon, it's this green line here. I was looking for a red line, and uh, in fact, it's this green line here. So, this we're now approaching both um, E and that green line. So, this is sort of the moment of truth, if you like, because um, we could now see um, the pattern really fizzle out because the time we're at. And, um, and so on. So we're not only at the kind of end of the day, but we're also now reaching kind of this uh, trend line which has, has struggled uh, previously, of course the price has struggled previously, but it also corresponds with this lower aspect of the, of the wedge. So probably traders are now thinking about taking some profit here.
as you can see, we're right on, we're right on the uh, the E level now. If this wedge is the whole A, B, C, D, E, actually directly not only on the E level but also on this trend line, which is actually um, a point of um, synchronicity, if you like. Um, where there's two levels that almost identically correspond. So we are seeing a little bit of profit taking at that level. So what we're just waiting to see, as we've been saying, is is it going to zoom through and just overthrow the underly? At the moment, it's behaving perfectly well, but as we all know, this is not a perfect market. It doesn't all, and it doesn't always behave um, perfectly well. So we're actually um, actually seeking for um, this wedge to break out uh, below its E wave. There's always going to be traders taking the other side of the trade though, so if we look at the bigger picture, we could also view this as a, a very significant pullback in this rally. Um, in which case, you know, there'll be buyers here and um, trading this, this, this sort of very substantial pullback. Okay, folks, so as you can see, uh, since we went away, uh, what's happened uh, over the last couple of hours has been as follows. So, as you will recall, our stop loss was around about here. And uh, you remember uh, we were looking at this as sort of like a, a free bar stop that we were going to hold in place. And we had a little bit of action around the medium line. Medium line. But the most recent high didn't get anywhere near our stop loss. And then over the last sort of two hours, uh, as we have predicted, the uh, price has come very nicely and neatly into our take profit area, uh, taken us out of the market and brought us into a position where the, uh, the market is almost dead on at uh, 93.16. And it came down to 9320, which happens to be, as we, we have it, uh, precisely that 25% um, extension below the uh, medium line. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and it's like uh, trading in life, for example. It's there to benefit you and to help you uh, in your analysis and your trading. Thanks very much.